The Robert Wood Show is on the air as the Bills wide receiver welcomes his special guest, quarterback Tyrod Taylor. I'm Dave Jixon from 97 Rock. It certainly wasn't California dreaming as the Bills left LA, but it was a win, and now we face the 49ers. We're going to break it all down. I'm Sarah O'Brien from 1033 The Edge, ready to pass your comments and questions on to Tyrod. We're on the air with football fans' favorite TV show. The Robert Wood Show on WBBZ TV is presented by Gelber and O'Connell, your car accident and injury law firm. Mighty Taco, do the cue. Mighty Taco's new quesadilla styled burritos and to Graf Hospital, because we see people, not just patients. And now, from the WBBZ TV studio from 97 Rock, here's co-host Dave Jixter. Welcome to the Robert Wood Show. I am Dave Jixter from 97 Rock, and this is Tyrod Taylor. funny um, Tyrod uh, it's a Robert Wood show but I guess for right now it's gonna be the Tyrod Taylor show <laughs> because Robert obviously must have stayed in LA he's got a lot of family out there he was yeah. telling us how he had to buy 30 or so tickets so he actually stayed an extra day and is flying in but his flight got delayed so he should be here before the end of the show let's hope yeah um, like you said he has family out there in the West Coast <laughs> he has family out there in the West Coast um, so it was good for him to stay back and see those guys so let's talk a little football, sir. I tell you what, the Buffalo Bills have won three games in a row for the first time in five years. Um, I didn't know that stat, actually. Uh, but, I mean, we're just taking it game by game, uh, not worrying too far ahead, uh, just trying to focus and execute each and every weekend. Can you tell us about the spark? I mean, you started 0-2, and, and, and granted, you were in both of the first games, but then everybody started counting you guys out. They were looking at your schedule. I shouldn't say everybody, but they were looking at the schedule, and, and they're seeing you had to play Arizona, which, which at the time, everybody thought they were going to be a tough team. Then you had to go into New England, and then you had to fly out west to play L.A., who were 3-1, and one, and they're, they're a pretty good team. And then, all of a sudden, this team starts finding a way to win. Can you tell us about the new spark? Uh, definitely. Um, every game is definitely important. Um, starting off 0-2 definitely is not the way that we uh, viewed our season going into the year. Um, but we had to bounce back, and um, that's something that the guys did um, in the locker room. Uh, we never started pointing finger, blaming people. Uh, we just stayed together and uh, we're just battling it out right now. You're, you're a team leader. You're proving yourself as, as a quarterback. Um, you're, you're making smart plays. You're not giving the ball up. But some people have been criticizing you on your th throwing the ball and your completion ratio. What do, you, what do you have to say to your critics, and what do you feel you need to do to really get your game on target? Only, the only stat that matters to me at the end of the day is winning. Um, mm -hmm. I, I could go out there and have a pretty game, and, and, and it's not on the winning side. Like I said, the only thing that matters to me is winning. Uh, every weekend, every Sunday is not going to be a pretty uh, statistical game, uh, but we got to find ways to win, and that's what we've been able to do. And um, like I said, it's not going to be pretty every weekend. Um, how do you feel about the play calling so far? Uh, Anthony Lynn taking over Greg Roman after the second game, and you guys are 3-0. Does, does that have anything to do with it at all? Um, we're just going out there and playing, playing together. I think the team is definitely playing complimentary football. Offense is feeding off the defense. Uh, special teams is bringing the energy as well, too. Um, it's definitely a, a new play caller back there. Um, but I think the guys on the offense are just coming together and holding each, uh, each person accountable and going out there and, uh, and playing for the man beside you. Um, it's definitely tough when you lose an offensive coordinator early in the season. But like I said, no one started to blame other people. Uh, we didn't point fingers. We just found found a way to win and looked internally and see uh, what, what can we do better and uh, just strive to get better. You know, the signs of a good team is when if the offense is, is struggling a little bit, the defense steps up or the special teams step up, and that certainly has been happening this year. The defense has been phenomenal. Uh, Lorenzo Alexander, um, Zach Brown, um, Kyle Williams. I mean, wh what do you have to say about the defense this year? Uh, they're playing their butts off each and every week. Um, like you said, uh, a great team plays off each other's energy, and we've been able to find uh, a balance of that. Um, the defense has definitely uh, brought us out of 
some slumps uh, throughout the game as well as offense has, uh, has sparked with some big plays as well too. So uh, we just got to continue to keep playing off each other's energy and going out there and finding ways to win. I noticed yesterday you, uh, you checked a lot of plays, you called some audibles. Um, I thought more so than you've done in the past, and I might be wrong on that, but is, is it something that Anthony Lynn's giving you the leeway to check plays more, or is it something that you've always had the, the okay to do but just didn't ha haven't done it as much? Uh, different games uh, kind of determines uh, how much I check at the line. Uh, certain teams get different looks, and uh, certain, sometimes I get two or three plays in the headset and just have to get out of certain looks. Um, but uh, yesterday was a was an opportunity where I could go out there and, uh, and change some plays at the line. Uh, we have a no huddle package as well, too, that we use right before the halftime uh, situation, the two minute. But um, uh, each game is going to be different when it comes to that. Um, some games you're going to have the ability to check at the line and some games you're not. You know, I found out you guys flew out Saturday, is that correct? Yes. Um, I was kind of concerned that the team might come out a little flat, you know, it's a you know, cross-country flight or whatever, but yeah. if that wasn't the case? Yeah, um, uh, Coach Rex said that they've done studies, um, and they say you either go out a week early or you go out the night before. Um, it's two different ways, and we felt that uh, what's best for our team was to go out the night before, um, have meetings, keep it short. Uh, but I think guys, um, reacted to that schedule uh, pretty well. Like you said, we didn't come out flat. We was able to come out with some energy. And um, I think moving forward, our West Coast trips will be like that as well. Tyra, this team really has to be starting to gel. I mean, three games in a row. Everybody seems to be working together. Uh, tell us about the atmosphere in the locker room after the game. Uh, we're excited. I mean, anytime you get a win in this National Football League, it's definitely big, uh, especially on the road. Road games are hard to come by. Um, so. Uh, we definitely cherish those moments. Um, we had a victory Monday today, so we was off. But uh, I went over to the facility early, and, and guys are still there. I um, was trying to get better, take care of their bodies. Um, I just think the team is definitely together, uh, more together than, than I felt in my two years here. So uh, looking forward to the things we could do as a team. You were 12 for 23 of 124 yards and two touchdowns. Um, Two touchdowns is a big number to, you know, that sparked the Bills' victory. Um, but there was one little problem there, is when you did not line up behind Eric Wood. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm sure nobody said a word to you after the game. <laughs> nah, everybody says something. <laughs> uh, and that was uh, definitely not one of my best moments as a quarterback, but uh, just trying to get the formation situated uh, and didn't even pay attention to who I lined up behind, but made up for it on 30-19, though. Eric's a good friend of mine. I'm sure he um, he, he uh, joked around with you after the game. Can you, yeah, can you tell he, us what he, he actually didn't. He actually didn't know what happened um, during the game. He kept saying, well, "What happened? Was it a bad snap?" And I was like, "Don't worry about it." <laughs> <laughs> so a couple plays go by. He asked me again. I'm like, "Bro, don't worry about it." <laughs> All right, we'll be right back with Tyrod Taylor. When we come back, we're going to head on over to the digital zone with Sarah O'Brien from 103.3 The Edge next. show here at WBBZ TV. It's live. We got a full house tonight. They're very, very excited. And uh, Robert, again, is, is his flight's late, so it's okay to call it the Tyrod Taylor show tonight, right? Gotta change that. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a fine job. <laughs> You know, there were so many questions to ask Robert, you know, about going back to his hometown, playing the stadium that he played at in college. He was an honorary captain. Yeah. Uh, he had to be psyched. Yeah, for sure. Um, we had a bunch of guys from USC um, that was actually uh, participating in the game like yesterday. Like four or five, right? Yeah, Roby had an awesome game as well, too. Yeah. A um, couple of coaches that played at USC. That was actually my first time playing at the Coliseum, so it was definitely um, an, uh, a great experience. Was it intimidating at all? Because there, there were a lot of people there. No, nah, it's just football. Yeah, you're used to that, right? <laughs> you're used to that. All right, it's time to check in and find out what's trending with the Bills on social media. Sarah O'Brien's in the Digital Zone, sponsored by DeGraff Memorial Hospital, where we see people, not just patients. Sarah O'Brien from 103.3 The Edge, take it away. Thanks so much, Dave. Make sure you're following along with us on our Twitter, at WBBZ and at Robert Woods Show. Where you can also find us on Facebook, too, at WBBZ TV. Make sure you're getting in all your questions there so we can answer them live every Monday night on the Robert Woods Show. Our first question comes from Twitter. We're talking with Andre. He wants to know how your experience was with starring in your own Toyota commercial. <laughs> the Toyota <laughs> commercial was, uh, was cool. Um, I didn't realize for a commercial that you're on set for 12 hours, uh, so that was probably a change for me. But um, 
the overall experience was cool, and it's always funny to hear yourself uh, on TV when you're just cleaning up around the house or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's great, though, when people start approaching you for endorsements. That means things are going well. Yeah, um, I never put too much thought into it, but definitely blessed uh, for the opportunity, for sure. Yeah, you got a great face for TV. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Our next question comes from buffalobills.com. It was actually based off of an interview that you had done. Um, and you were talking about how coming back from losing, getting the three-game streak going there, and talking about the defense. What do you think is our secret ingredient with the defense? I can't give out a secret ingredient. I would just say the guys are playing for each other. Um, guys have definitely bought into the system. And uh, just going out there and laying it on the line for the brothers that, that sacrifice each and every day for them. A lot of great players in that defense, but it seems like a lot of players that people really didn't know too much about before the season keep stepping up, and it's a new guy each game that keeps stepping up. That's got to be uh, a great feeling for the entire team. For sure. Um, this league is all about taking advantage of the opportunities, and uh, guys have definitely had opportunities to, to go out there and prove themselves and show what they could do, and uh, they're taking it uh, head on and, and going out there and playing well. Got another question for you. LaShawn McCoy just recently did an interview with The Record, and he was saying that he really could have pushed himself a little bit further on Sunday, saying that he could have easily had over 200 yards. Do you do that yourself? Do you reflect on the game and think about what you would have done, or do you just kind of put it behind you after you get the win? Uh, you definitely uh, review the tape and uh, go out there and see some of the plays that you left out on the field. Um, definitely, uh, we didn't play a perfect game by any means. But we found a way to get a win, but uh, it's definitely some ways uh, and some areas that we can clean up. And um, as, a, as a competitor, you want to be perfect every time you step on the field. So um, criticizing yourself uh, definitely is something that, it, that, that makes you better in the long run. Do you uh, have any comments on LaShawn's game yesterday? Uh, he played awesome. Um, I mean, he definitely uh, is a dynamic back, uh, whether it's catching the ball out of the backfield or running. Um, he's very special, and um, I'm glad that he's in the backfield with me. A lot of people are buzzing about Lorenzo Alexander saying that he's the underdog. How exactly do you think that he got all those sacks? Do you think he got a lot of uh, team support there? Or do you think he did that all on his own? Um, I mean, defense, as far as getting a sack, it's, uh, it's a unit. Um, those defense alignment uh, work together. Uh, sometimes plays are called for certain guys to free up. Um, the main thing is that he's just uh, focusing in on his assignment and going out there and playing hard. Um, he's a heck of a player. He's played in this league for a number of years. and. Um, I would say um, he's definitely getting his opportunity to shine, and he's doing it. He's leading the league in sacks right now. That's awesome. Man. Yeah. Keep doing it. Yeah. All right, and that's all the time I have for you today in the Digital Zone. Back to you, Dave. Hey, thanks, Sarah. Nice job, Sarah. The Digital Zone is brought to you by the Grant Memorial Hospital, where we see people, not just patients. Coming up next, we're going to take a trip to the studio audience and get their questions. We'll be right back. Connect with Robert with the Mighty Q questions of the week. Mighty Taco's new quesadilla grill press style burritos are available now at Mighty Taco. Chicken, steak, or just say cheese. The Mighty Q is the perfect way to do the Q. Welcome back to the Robert Woods Show. Robert is on his way. Uh, he got stranded, his flight got delayed, but we do have Tyrod Taylor here, and we're so happy for that. We had a, we had a great game yesterday, the offense really came together again. And what's your question for Mr. Tyrod Taylor? What's your name, first of all? Well, I'm Dick Zolnowski. Uh, I'm the president of the Buffalo Bills Booster Club. Oh, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Booster Club meets the last Tuesday of every month at 7.30 at the Knights of Columbus Hall, 1530 Kenmore Avenue. And we are sponsoring a trip to Cincinnati, so just Google Buffalo Bills Bo Booster Club. You guys have been around for a long time. Do a great job. Thank you. Since 1961. Wow. Well, my question for you sort of stole my thunder about the jet lag. So my question to Tyrod is, how do you adjust your practice time when you're going on the West Coast? You don't have that much time. Um, we didn't really adjust our practice time this past week. Uh, because it was a 1 o'clock game, we tried to stay on the same schedule. Um, if it's a later game, like the Monday night versus Seattle, uh, we may push the practice back in the week uh, a little later. So um, it's, all, it's all up to Coach, Coach Rex, to be honest. Okay. Great. Great job with, with the uh, boosters. What's your name, young lady? Yes. What's your question for Tyrod? So three victory Mondays in a row, and everyone's been showing up on the day off. What's different from last year to this year? Great um, question. Great question. Uh, I would just say everyone's bought in. Um, guys are trying to trying to be better. Uh, 
uh, finding ways to, to, like I said, just critique themselves on whether it's taking care of their bodies. Um, but just, just buying in. I mean, we're here for a reason, and that's to win games. So um, if everyone can get in on Mondays and uh, find out what they didn't do so well in the previous game, then uh, we're better off as a team. Great question. What's your name there, young man? Uh, Charles Pierce. Just step right down here. Charles Pierce. What's your question for Tyrod? Um, I just wondered, what's the biggest hit you've ever taken in your career so far? The biggest hit? Jeez, it's <laughs> been a lot of them. Yeah, uh, try not to get hit so many times, but yeah. maybe my freshman year versus Clemson. Um, that was a pretty big hit. Uh, I can't remember the guy that hit me, but it was a pretty big hit. All right, back to college, so <laughs> hopefully you won't get hit too many more times. Nah. <laughs> What's your name, pal? Nice jersey. Paul Sosansky. All right, I love that jersey. Me, me All right. too. What's your question for Tyrod? Um, when you were a kid, what sports did you play? Ah, uh, great question. Um, I played baseball, football, track, um, basketball, uh, little soccer. Um, that's about it, though. <laughs> nice, nice question. It would have been a better question asking what sports you didn't play. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be back with Tyrod Taylor, hopefully Robert Woods. One member of our studio audience will receive a red card from Money Taco, by the way. Next up, we're going to play the Hot Shot Football Challenge with Tyrod. We'll be right back. The Hot Shot Football Challenge is brought to you by Gelber and O'Connell, your car accident and injury law firm. Call 633-5050. Welcome back to the Robert Woods Show. It's time to play the Gelber and O'Connell Hot Shot Football Challenge where our winner will get a red card from Muddy Taco and Robert is not here, so we have Team Tyrod Taylor and what's your name? Nick. Nick from West Seneca? Mm-hmm. All right, pal. Uh, you, you play any sports? Yeah, football. Okay, do you play quarterback, I hope? No, safety. Oh, safety, right. okay. <laughs> well, listen, uh, there's going to be a big challenge here. You're taking on Tyrod, but you can yeah. win because we're going to make Tyrod throw with his left left hand, all right? Is that yeah. fair? Mm -hmm. All right, Nick, you go first. Good luck to you. Good luck. And just a little high. And Tyrod, you're going to go now. You'll go next. You're going to throw with his left hand. Now remember, everybody, that is not his throwing arm. All right. So step right back. All right, Nick, round number two here. Playing for that red card from Muddy Taco. Almost. All right, Tyrod. Throwing with his non-throwing arm and a little hook throw over there just missed. Nick, you can you can you can win this, man. Oh, so close. Tyrod for throw number three here, and there he's up one nothing. All right, Nick. Yeah, tied it up. All right, Tyrod. Okay, Nick, step right up there. You can win it right here. You can win it right here. And we're going to take a short break. We're going to come right back and find the keys to beating the 49ers. We'll be right back. Dave Jigster's wardrobe is provided by my stylist at Macy's. Hey, welcome back to the Tyrod Taylor Show. What's your name? <laughs> Man, made it in, still made it in. Robert Woods made it in, everybody. <laughs> Before we get to you, do you want to congratulate Nick? Nick from West Seneca, you put up a good fight, but he kicked your butt. <laughs> and you won a $25 red card to Muddy Taco. It's all good. But listen, so uh, congratulations on the win and everything, and you were playing back in your, your old stadium there. How did that feel? Yeah, it felt good, you know, uh, just, Everything felt the same, you know, walking out the tunnel, uh, playing on the same field, you know, looking in the crowd. Uh, you know, it was a great experience. You know, felt felt like a home game. Bills fans definitely representing LA. Now, not to bring up negative negativity here, but you did drop a ball. Drop yeah. one. Nice throw. <laughs> a beautiful ball. A beautiful ball. <laughs> and you could just see the frustration on your face. Man. Yeah. Uh, just just wanted to make a play. You know, the ball is there. Um, time was ticking. Just trying to make a play for the team. You know, uh, looking ahead. You know, before catching the ball, I got to catch the ball first. I uh, was able to make a play after that, you know, Ty came back to me. Yes, you but, were. But uh, just, uh, just able to concentrate and, and finish the game, get a win at the end of the day. You return home, the crowd is going to be going bananas. First time you won three games in a row in five yes. years. I mean, what are the keys now to beating the San Francisco 49ers? Um, just to play our game, uh, execute for sure. Um, but definitely um, just go out there and take care of the football. Uh, I think that's definitely one of the keys to our success is take care of the football, and that starts with me. 
I think, uh, like, like I said, you know, we've been um, doing well with turnovers, protecting the ball. Um, you know, protect the ball, you know, play, play solid offense, play solid defense, trust Anthony Lynn, you know, once again, and, and treat it, you know, game, game by game, play by play. And I think that should be the key to get the victory. Well, good luck, gentlemen. We want to thank you both for coming. Thanks, if you'd man. like to be a studio audience here, go to WBBZ.TV, reserve your spot. And next Monday, we're going to be talking about the fourth win in a row. <laughs> Sarah O'Brien from 103 through the edge. My good pal Robert Woods and Tyrod Taylor. Good luck, guys, and thank you so much for coming out.